We see a ranch house as we see old family photos hanging up on the walls. As we see Urban, his wife Nancy, and his son Scott sitting together at a table for dinner. As Urban says, Who's hungry? Scott says, I'm starved. Urban smiles and says, Good. As we see this family sit together by the table and eat together. In the future, we see nobody at the table. The table is flipped over as we see blood all over the house. As we see the blood runs across the floor. Eight years ago, we see a younger Audrin in a small house with music just blaring as we see him smoking a joint and dancing to music as he says, Underrated as fuck! We see one of his friends says, We smoke weed. We party all day. We dumb shit. Audrin says, I love this shit. He turns the music up and says, Let's party all night. Urban walks in as he's yelling over the music, Audrin, turn that shit down. Audrin doesn't hear him and Urban says, Turn that fucking shit off, man. Audrin still again doesn't hear him and Urban turns the radio off and Audrin says, Hey man, what the hell'd you do that for? Urban says, For my own sanity for one. Look, I let you stay here for a week after your girl kicked you out, alright? But this has gotten way out of hand, man. Drinking, smoking, loud music, not to mention bringing up your friend here every damn night. I mean, what the fuck is your name again? The guy says, I'm Bob. We party like gangsters, Urban says. Look, man, I don't mind you staying, all right, buddy? I really don't, but I got people coming by tomorrow to sign off everything on the place, all right? We gotta look professional, Audrin says. Well, hey, look, I'll help you out. Did you ever come up with a name for this place? Urban says, nah, man, I'm still figuring that out. Audrin says, ooh. I got it. How about Blackberry Ranch? Urban says, what the fuck are you talking about? Audrin says, come on, man. It sounds welcoming, doesn't it? I'm telling you, man. Just keep saying it to yourself. Blackberry Ranch. Blackberry Ranch. Blackberry Ranch. Blackberry Ranch. Welcome to Blackberry Ranch. Urban says, all right, all right, all right, all right. I get it. But if people ask, I'm saying you created it. Audrin says, deal. Currently, we see Audrin with the rest of Haley's group being escorted to the ranch as they're on their way there and Audrin asks, So what's it been like ever since I was around? Urban says, It was fine. We had our struggles here and there, but we're still here. Audrin says, Well, I can't wait to see what you've done with the place. Haley says to Dave, Keep your eyes peeled for any suspicious activity. You see one thing that feels off, give me a signal. Dave says, You got it. We see Urban says, hey, let's get moving, it's just up the hill. As they walk up to the gates to Blackberry Ranch, Urban says, welcome to Blackberry Ranch. As we see a huge farmhouse, 
barns, a big garage, and lots of gardens, an urban says. Audrin, could you please escort our friends here to the armory? We keep all our weapons there for the safety of this place. You good with that? Dave gives Urban a fake smile and says, Yeah, I'm all about the rules, man. Understood. We see them giving their weapons to a few men in this shed. As they lock them up, as we see one of them says to Haley, I'm sure you understand. Haley says, of course. But as they give over all their weapons and walk away, we see Dave still has a pistol hidden on him, just in case. Back at the lodge, we see Ashley sitting in a mini bar as Miles walks in and says, kids are upstairs. Did you know there was still hot water in this resort? Also, you see that big eating area? Damn, this place is sick. You know, I could settle down here for a little bit, I can't lie. Ashley says, it's awesome. Damn, look at this. She pulls out a deck of cards and starts laying them out on the table and says, you ever play blackjack? Miles says, Tuh, not in years. Might be a bit rusty. Ashley says, aren't we all? He sits down and she says, let's see what you got. Come on. Back in Canada, we see train tracks. As we see a Ziltramite sign. As we see blood sprays all over the sign. As we see Tom kills two deadheads. As Rivers then shoots one behind him. As Julia says, on your right, she slices one of them. As Bruce fires a couple shots and Tom says, get off the tracks, there's too many. They all run as they run for a while, as they then stop and Tom says, <sighs> all right, we lost them for now. River says, babe, we've been walking for over two days straight. We need to rest. Tom looks behind her to see a huge arena down the road as he then says, all right, we'll stop for the night. Keep going in the morning. They walk in to see a flipped over vending machine and dead people everywhere. As Tom says, watch your step. River says, whoa, you see this? They see a hockey rink as we see the ice is just old, dirty water by now. As Rivers then says, so even still, Montreal Canadians live on, huh? Tom says, apparently so. Let's take them out. We see them all walk onto the rink as reanimated hockey players try moving towards them. But as we see, they're all crawling as Tom looks down and says, Damn, I guess deadheads can't balance on their own. River says, Well, we just got some free kills there, honey. Tom says, Let's take these bastards out. As they kill all the crawling deadheads, as they all stand there with their bloody weapons in the arena, Rivers then smiles and says, I win again. I beat you again, honey. Tom says, Oh, yeah, yeah, you did. Good job. He just walks away, and Rivers looks surprised that he didn't say anything funny back to her. Tom walks up to Bruce and says, This is our spot for the night. I'll take first watch. Bruce says, You sure? Tom says, Yeah, I'm sure. As he walks away, Later that night, we see Rivers just sitting in one of the audience chairs as Julia walks up to her and says, Can't sleep? Rivers says, No, no, I'm fine. Just worried. Julia sits next to her and says, About what? Rivers says, Ever since Snoop, your father hasn't been the same. He hasn't been himself. He's barely talking or listening to any of us. I just... I don't even think he slept in the last two nights. He was on watch both nights, Julia says. What did he say to you? River says, that's the thing. He didn't say anything. I even offered him a joint yesterday and he turned it down. Julia says, oh, okay, there is something wrong. River says, we'll talk to him. But for tonight, let's just keep it between us. 
You better get some sleep, kiddo. We got a long trip ahead of us still. Julia says, Okay. Um, Rivers? Rivers says, What is it? Julia says, I know we don't know each other too much, but you mind if we talked more often? I just... I can't always talk to Tom about everything. And my mother is dead, and you're the only other woman I know that's alive, for Christ's sake, so... Maybe, River says, of course. You can talk to me about anything, at any time. Julia hugs her. As we see Tom in the shadows, as we see, he heard their conversation. As he looks back out the window, standing guard, as we see how upset he looks. Back at Blackberry Ranch, we see Haley and the group walking up to the main ranch house as we see Colin and Rebecca talking, as she says, You ever dreamed of a place like this, sir? Colin says, Never. Although ranch living wasn't always my style. I'm down for a change of scenery, though. Haley then walks up to the main house as we see a woman and a teenage boy standing there, as Urban says, Haley, this is my wife Nancy and my son Scott. Haley shakes her hand and Nancy says, Hi, nice to meet you. Haley says, you too. It's a beautiful piece of land, I must say. You're lucky. Nancy says, thank you. It's nice to see some new faces around here again. We keep growing at this rate, we'll have to keep you all somewhere. Here, come inside. All of you, have a look around. Haley looks back at everyone and says, thanks. Back at the lodge. We see Ashley laughs and says, oh, I went again. Mal says, fuck her. Well, shit. I guess I got to work on my skills first. Then I'll get back to you. Ashley says, well, mind standing guard? Going to try out this hot shower. Mal says, sure. As Miles sits there, as we see a small smile on his face. Back at Blackberry Ranch, we see Dave walking the trail on the ranch as Scott walks up to him and says, Hey, you're Dave Miller, right? Dave says, Yeah, yeah, that's me. Scott says, Hi, I'm Scott. Dave says, A pleasure. How long have you lived here, young man? Scott says, All my life, actually. My dad sacrificed a lot turning this place into what it was. Dave says, Ah, yeah, I can understand. After the outbreak, of course. Scott says, Not just the outbreak. Before, too. Dave says, Oh, well, I'm glad it's still here then. Scott says, Yeah, me too. Colin walks up to them and says, Hey, Dave, come see the house, man. This is incredible looking. Dave says, All right, I'll be right there. Well, hey, it was good meeting you, man. Scott says, Likewise, as they split off. We see Haley and the others looking around the house as Haley is looking at all the family photos on the walls as Nancy walks up to her and says, so you're the leader. Haley says, unofficially, I guess. My husband was the chosen leader. I'm just doing his job. Nancy offers her a drink and says, I can respect the hell out of that. Must have been hard out there. Haley says, it was. That's actually why I need your help. You have a nice, nice place. Not many people can say that anymore. Nancy says, well, I'll be glad to help with that. Did you ever have a place like this? Haley says, we did. At one point, it was 300 people plus. Nancy asks, how did it fall? She just looks into Haley's eyes. It fell. Well, you're a welcome addition. I think your people will do great here. Haley says, thanks. Nancy says, oh, and there's hot showers as well. Your crew can get cleaned up. My husband is hosting a big dinner for you and your people tonight. If you can be there, of course. Haley says, thanks. Of course we will. Nancy says, great. Back in Canada, the next day, we see the door to the arena opening as Tom, Rivers, and Julia wake up to see Bruce saying, time to go. We see them walking down the train tracks as Bruce walks up to Tom and says, hey, look man, I found another beer in my pack. I know that's always your way to start off a damn good day, man. Tom says, I'm good. Bruce says, oh, come on, man. We got way more supplies. We aren't low on supplies yet. Come on, I know you want one. River says, hey, Tom, 
What was that fucked up joke you told me the other day? Tom says, I don't know. River says, oh, come on, honey. It was something about a squirrel and uh, what, what the hell was it again? Come on, tell me. I, it was hilarious. Julia says, come on, dad, let's hear it. Tom yells, I'm not telling it again. They all kind of back up and Tom slowly turns around and says, I'm not telling another joke again. Look where we are. Walking down train tracks, hoping to God that we are walking into the heart of darkness. Trying to believe that maybe there's a happy ending in an already dead world. Now we can try to mask it with all the jokes and the pranks and the drinking and the smoking. But that man is not the man standing in front of you now. If you want to survive out here, you can't be like that. Not anymore. It'll get you killed. Christ, it has gotten people killed. River says, Tom, I, Tom says, I love you more than anything in this world. And I can't watch the only part that's living die too. It'll kill me, Rivers. It will. I can't survive another fallen haven. Julia says, Dad, you're still that man, Tom says. I'm not. I lost my friends. I lost my bar. My pride, and the only thing that I got that was good, besides you standing in front of me right now, is a sorry from a man that I wanted to kill. I guess that's victory though, right? Now here's what's gonna happen. There's a trade center up the road that we can go. Trade some of our stuff that'll help us get the rest of the way. Because we're gonna survive out here. The past will not repeat itself again. All the jokes. All the parties and celebrations, it's over. All we can celebrate now is that we're still breathing. That's celebration these days. Rever says, where's the man I knew? The one that went with me to Candyland. Tom laughs and says, <laughs> Candyland. Candyland isn't real. That life wasn't real. It was all a lie. The truth is that we are living, and we're going to keep living, because that man you knew, well, he died back in Kingstonville with his best friend. As he walks down the tracks, as everyone looks sad, as Bruce looks at Rivers and Julia and says, he'll come around, as they all look nervous for him. Back at the lodge, we see Ashley coming out of the shower as we see her looking through some of the empty rooms. As she finds a radio and she fires it up, as we hear a bunch of static and noise, as she goes channel to channel, as she says, calling out everyone, everyone that can hear this. Is there anyone out there that can hear my voice? Is there, is there anyone even still alive out there? She hears nothing and leaves the radio behind. Back in Canada, we see a bunch of people walking towards a trading center. As we see Tom and the others are in this group of people. As we see Tom whispering to Rivers, just follow my lead in here, okay? Rivers says, mm-hmm. We see a few guards at the front. As we see one of them says, line up at the front before entry. Tom and the group follow along as we see them line up with everyone else, as Julia says. What the hell is this place? Bruce says, who knows? Let's just get what we need, get the fuck out. We see it's their turn next, and Tom says, all right, just follow me. We see a woman says in French, Bienvenue à la Centre Commerciale. Comment je peux vous aider? Tom says, oh, for fuck's sakes. Do you speak English, uh, anglais? The woman says, of course. Uh, welcome to World Training Center. How can I help you? Tom says, we have stuff to trade for. The woman says, up front? You give me something before entry? Tom says, oh, you greedy bastard. Yo, Bruce, give me one of those joints. We see he tries bribing her for entry. And she says, 
Not enough. Tom says, all right, look, lady, I'm not here for you. All right, me and my family need supplies for our trip. Now, I know you have something to trade for, so are you going to let us in already? Or do I have to let myself in? Two soldiers go up to them, and Tom says, oh, come on now. Is that really how it's going to be? Give me my joint back. Julia says, dad, just let it go. Tom says, oh, yeah, and I bet she's going to smoke that joint on her break, too, isn't she? As they're taking them away, Rivers says to the soldier, hey, get your hands off of him. We see someone walks up to them with fancy shoes and says, is there a problem here? The soldier says, these people are trying to force their way in. They're trying to bribe Marie here. The man says, well, did they happen to attack or pull a weapon on her? The soldier says, no. The man walks up to him and puts his hand on his shoulder and says, you know the rules, Mark. Now, this is the place of the people. Maybe you gotta learn what it's like to work for the people, huh? He looks at Tom's group and says, Sorry for the disturbance, new travelers. It's a pleasure to have you, though. Y'all can go on inside if you want. They all look on edge, and Tom says, Thank you. As they then walk into the trading center altogether. Back at the lodge, we see Ashley sleeping as we hear static in the background, as we hear a muffled voice saying things over the radio. As she is woken up by this, she runs to the radio and says, Hello? Who is this? She still can't make out what they're saying as she says, Hang on one second. She fiddles with the radio a little bit and then says, I'm sorry, can you repeat that please? We hear the voice saying, We are reaching out to you. We tried to reach out to you earlier. Ashley sees that she left the radio on by accident and says, Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was me. I didn't think anybody heard my voice. The person says, Well, we're very glad you reached out when you did. Ashley says, We. The person says, Yes, we can assure you that you can trust everything that goes on moving forward in this communication. Ashley says, How do I know that for sure? The person says, Because we come from a place of trust. Something, unfortunately, that the world does not have very much of these days. We come from a very safe place with people that are trying to restart civilization back to what it was. A place where you don't have to be afraid or wonder whether or not someone's going to slit your throat in your sleep. Because you'll be here and away from the chaos. Ashley looks really on edge and says, Okay, so after all this time, why should I believe a single word that you say? Sounds like make-believe to me. The person says, well, I'm sure you've seen our signs on the road. Ashley says, wait a minute, you're Zilchermite? The person says, yes, now tell us where you are and we'll come right to you. Ashley laughs and says, <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. The person says, well, at the very least, maybe give us your general location so that we know how or where to help you, and especially if anybody else needs help. Ashley says, you go first. Where do you come from? The person says, we are reaching out to you from Toronto, Canada. We have a safe place in the city with electricity, food, resources, everything a person needs to survive. Now tell me anybody else that would have given you that opportunity for survival. Ashley looks puzzled and responds, well, that's very nice, but um, I'm not sure I can trust what you're selling me here. Miles kind of walks in in the background in the shadows and Ashley says to the person, I'm sorry, but I can't tell you where we are. The person says, Well, we will be one call away if you're willing to reach out. Ashley says, Good. She turns off the radio and notices Miles behind her and she says, How long you been standing there? Miles says, Long enough to know that that sounded like absolute bullshit. Ashley says, yeah, I don't trust a single word coming out of his mouth. But then we see Billy walk into the room very slowly and says, I want to go. Ashley says, Billy, this is not a good idea. Also, I want to hear your mom's thoughts on this before we decide anything. If this ranch works out, then this place will be off the table. Miles nods to show he agrees. Back in Canada, we see Tom, Rivers, Julia, and Bruce walking through the Trade Center. As Rivers says, 
So much cool stuff in here, Tom says. All right, you guys look around. I'm going to go talk to this guy here, Julia says. Rivers, let's see what's going on at the barbecue. We see Tom walking up to a man and a few others sitting at a table and says, Hello, are you LaVox? The man says, Yes, I am. What do you have for me? Tom says, Well, actually... Uh, he sits down and says, It's actually about what you can do for me. LaVox says, What do you have? Tom says, Depends. We need water and food, enough for another two weeks. Lavox says, that's a lot to ask for, sir. You have something to trade? Tom pulls out four joints that they have left and the gummies that they have as well. And Lavox says, oh, look at this, gentlemen. Lumberjack here really packed some heat after all. But it's not enough. Tom says, not enough. How much more would you need to make this deal? Lavox says, show me what you got and we'll see. Tom looks annoyed. Bruce is walking through this place when he sees two guards whispering to each other as they walk away down this long hallway. As Bruce looks suspicious of them and starts following them. We see Rivers and Julia pigging out on the hot dogs and burgers at the barbecue. As Tom walks up to them and says, wrap it up, we're leaving. Rivers says, did they accept? Tom says, they did, but we need to bring them more. Rivers says, how the hell are we gonna find more of that shit? Tom says, I know a place, all right? Before the world went to shit, the prime minister that we had run in the country made it legal for us to smoke dope in the country, all right? Now, there's a few weed shops nearby. We'll check there. Bring them what they want, get what we need. River says, all right, but we need to get Bruce first. Oh, and you gotta try one of these hot dogs. Tom says, all right, just stay here. I'll go get Bruce. Rivers and Julia keep eating, as River says, damn, this place is cool. Back at Blackberry Ranch, we see everyone from the group in clean clothes as they walk into the dining room. As we see, they're all sitting at the table, and Urban, Nancy, and Scott, and a few more of Urban's people walk in and sit in. As we see, Dave says to Urban, It's a wonderful place. Urban says, Thank you kindly. Audrin says, Yeah, I almost forgot what life was here. You know, I actually came up with the name of this place, fun fact. Nancy serves them all their plates, and Urban says, Thank you, honey. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I had a very interesting take on it, too. Haley laughs and says, Wait, so that's why this place has such an exotic name? They all laugh, and Dave says, Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you know what's funny to me? Urban says, What's that? Dave says, That you managed to survive this long. <laughs> I mean, I saw your fields. Your crops? They're no more. No vegetables on your plates, but a lot of meat. We see everyone eating as Haley says, Dave, not now. Dave says, all right, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm in. If we're really gonna be living here, we better know where we're getting our food from, right? So tell me, Urban, how do you keep your family fed? Sydney then looks at the meat as she looks at the man sitting across the table from her, has a watch. She keeps staring at it as Dave smiles back at Urban and says, Well, this is nice. Although I don't believe I'll be digging in, unfortunately. Sorry. Haley says, Dave, just relax, okay? Nancy says, Ah, huh, well, I see you're a few apples short from a tree, huh? Sydney then asks the man across the table, Where'd you get that watch? Urban pipes in and says, My son took it off a corpse that he found. Sadly, my son didn't make it. Sydney then remembers the man she killed. She looks at the meat that they're eating as she realizes they're eating Nathan's remains. She looks horrified. Dave gives her a nod and says, Well, Urban, I'm gonna have to cut dinner short for tonight. He flips the table and pulls out his hidden gun and shoots to Urban's men. He then shoots Urban in the shoulder as he goes down. Dave then tells our group, get back now! They all get behind Dave and Audrin as Audrin kills one of the guys with his chainsaw and the blood goes everywhere as they run away down the stairs for cover. They then lock themselves in the basement as they all look horrified. Colin says, What the fuck just happened? Sydney says, We ate. We ate. She throws up and then Haley says, 
Guys, they see hanging bodies that are frozen over in a freezer room. As Sydney says, Dave, guard the door. They walk into this freezer as they see dead bodies everywhere. As Sydney then sees Nathan's frozen head is still in there. As she looks horrified, as she remembers the book that she saw that said delivery to ranch. Sydney then says, Blackberry Ranch. Fuck. She looks horrified and says, This son of a bitch. Rebecca says, Are we seriously in a cannibal's room? Haley says, Dave, how many bullets you have left? Dave says, I got eight. Haley says, All right. Well, we're going to make them count. Guys, grab those cleavers and any other weapons you can find from the room. I want all of you to take one. Audrin says, well, I still got my double barrel. Look, I'll have you all know these freaks weren't like this when I was around. They must have gotten desperate over the years. Urban did a lot for me over the years, but he fucking betrayed me. Ain't no way I'm going to stand by a group of cannibals. So I'll help you all get out of here. Haley says, thank you. And it's all right. You couldn't have known. Audrin says, well, we'll worry about forgiving me later. For now, let's get off this ranch. Back in Canada, we see the two men walking down a hallway as we see Bruce following behind them, trying to see where they're going. They get into a room and close the door. As we see a window outside of it as Bruce is hearing them talking, as we hear someone, as he hears a voice saying, Look, we finish up this job like we said, that's it. We're working overtime here, which wasn't part of our agreement, the other guy is saying. And who are you to question the conductor? You have a problem, take it up with him. For now, it's back to work, both of you. Bruce overhears this as Tom sneaks up behind him and says, Hey, what the hell are you doing? Bruce says, There's something going on here, Tom. Tom says, What did you see? Bruce says, I didn't see anything. These guys were talking about a conductor of some sort. They were working overtime for some big wig. I couldn't make out the rest. Tom says, We need to go now. They then hear two guns clicking as two men stop them, and one of them says, Well, look at these pitsy fools, huh? I guess uh, bad things come to those who stick their noses in places they're not supposed to be, huh? As we see Tom and Bruce look nervous. We see Julia looking at some jewelry, as she then sticks it in her pocket and steals it. River says, Hey, I didn't know you did that shit. Julia says, Used to do that shit all the time. Back when I was younger, especially. My mom never really cared where I was, so I did that. Passed some time. River says, you know how many questions I have for you, child? Come on, let's go. They start walking. As we see a soldier walks up to Julia and grabs her by force and starts taking her. As River says, hey, get your hands off of her. What did she do? The soldier says, she's stealing. That's against the rules here. She has to pay. Rivers punches one of the guards and says, Get off of her! They knock Rivers down to the ground too, as they take her, and the soldier says, You both will answer for this. Rivers has a mouthful of blood as she looks angry. Back in Blackberry Ranch, Urban has a mouthful of blood as Nancy tries helping him up, but then... They start getting shot at by Dave and Audrin. Some of their men cover for them and fire back. Dave says, get out of the house now, go! They all run out onto the yard as Haley says, we need our guns. Dave says, all right, Audrin, you take one, I take the other. Audrin says, sure thing, man. We see the two guards at the armory. Here's all the gunfire as one of them says to the other guy. What the hell is going on out there? The other guy says, we should probably check the- They get shot in the head as the other guy looks scared and runs as fast as he can. As Audrin says, God damn it! Double barrel fucking shotgun! Dave says, I got him. As the guy is running away, we see Dave shoots him in the head. As Audrin then smiles and flips off his dead corpse and says, Ah, I always hated that one. 
Haley and the others all take their weapons back as Haley says, we need to get out of here now. More of Urban's men come out of the house and start firing at them. They all back up against the barn, but as we see, Haley doesn't make it in time. As they are shooting at her, she runs into the garage and zigzags back and forth to make sure that they can't shoot her. She then locks herself in the garage as Dave and the others all stand behind the barn as Dave sees Haley runs into the garage and says, shit, back in Canada. Tom tries knocking the gun out of the guy's hand as Bruce then kicks the other one down as they then take their guns and more and more start firing back at both of them down the hall. Tom says, we gotta find a way out. Bruce says, where's Rivers? Julia, Tom says, still at the market. Bruce fires a few shots and says, then we get through them, we get back to our family. They then both get guns pointed at the back of their heads as Tom looks pissed and the person says, don't worry, we'll take you to them. Back at the ranch, we see Haley is out of breath as she is locked into the garage. But as we see, two men with knives come up behind her. As we see, one of them says, Finally found you. You're a sneaky little girl, ain't you? Haley kicks one of them down as they fight and they knock a grenade onto the floor. As we see, the other one stabs Haley three times as she falls. As we see, the grenade on the floor. Dave shoots as many of the men as he can from far, as he then says, I'm out. Audrin says, me too. Sydney says, we have to go. Dave and the others start running for the garage as he says, Haley, Haley, we have to. The garage blows up in front of all of them. Dave looks devastated and says, Haley. Everyone is broken as then more of Urban's men start firing at Dave and the others as they have no bullets and no other choice but to run for their lives. Audrin says, get off the ranch, get off the ranch now, come on. Back in Canada, we see Tom, Rivers, Julia, and Bruce all sitting in a room together, guarded by a few men. As Tom says, are you all okay? Rivers says, we're fine. Tom then looks at the guard and says, I want to talk to the man in charge of this place. The guard says, oh, don't worry. He's coming. He'll take care of all this. We see a door opens. As we see, this person walks in. As we see the same man in the suit from before, as he says, Well, I guess people really have let go of that whole rules approach to communication these days. Now you've been here one day, and all we've had is shootings and stealing from this precious angel right here. Tom says, Don't talk to her. The man says, Oh, I'm sorry, did I strike a nerve? Look here. Now, I don't know what kind of neck of the woods you folks come from, but around here in this town, all punishments fit the crowd. As Tom and the others look scared. Back at the ranch, we see Dave and the others running into the woods, trying to get off the ranch. We see the garage up in smoke. As we see, Haley laying in the field out back. As we see, she got out before it blew up. She's bleeding really badly. As she sees more men are coming, as she starts slowly walking away across the field, trying to get away. As we see, she's bleeding all over the fields. As she is walking off the ranch, as she says, this isn't the end. 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 Don't let the waves keep pulling me under and take my breath till all that's left is wreckage and ruin.
my car.